Hi, welcome to Dip Into the Ink, the show where I and sometimes a guest go through a comic book page by page, aka the show I just use as an excuse to talk to my friends about comics. And today we have uh, a guest on the show. So excited. My first white guest ever. I'm really excited about that. <laughs> Uh, my life. I get that a lot. It's true. It's true. Uh, my <laughs> friend Kevin Hewitt. Hi. Hello. What's up? Hello. Hello. And I'm very excited. We're here to talk about the indie series Hunger and the Dusk. Before we dive Hunger. into it, uh, Kevin, what's what's your general thoughts on like the comic book medium, the format? Why did you let me bully you into doing this? Like, let's <laughs> talk about that for a hot minute. So first and foremost, like pop culture has sort of, I feel like brought it back to the forefront of like people's attention, right? Um, mm-hmm. the, we, I think we just sort of exited the comic book superhero renaissance. Um, you know, obviously movies and, and film and TV series and even books are still on their way out, but I'm, you know, fresh in everyone's mind. And, um, you know, me being a, a hyper nerd, uh, putting myself in all facets of nerdum, uh, you know, be it. Warhammer 40k or World of Warcraft or um, Dungeons and Dragons. I find myself sticking my my nerd interests in and in, if where it can they can find a spot to take holds. Uh, oh. And I feel like comic books was sort of like the last you know the realm where I haven't <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, part of that was just because like I know how like massive and vast comics can be, and I felt mm-hmm. like any time I pick something up, um, it'd be like halfway through a story, right? Or it'd be. Yeah like some offshoot universe that I didn't fully understand what's happening or just, you know, didn't really know where to begin. Um, I know we did a, a podcast episode a while back, though, sort of like me asking you guys questions yeah. about what it is to begin that and um, and what it was to begin that, right? So um, you, when you told me that you had an idea mm-hmm. where you come with, at me with a brand new, uh, oh, yeah. you know, series, Starting off with book number one, mm-hmm. right? Nice and easy, exactly at the correct starting position. I was was happy to to hop into that. So that's that's sort of where we're at today now. Yeah. And I love that because I I get the difficulty. You see, like Batman seven ninety five, and you're like, am I supposed to just pick this up and know what's happening? Exactly. Um, and you know, mm-hmm. I, I'm on Reddit a lot, and I see people making these posts of like, oh, here's this really cool moment and this really cool story, and I love seeing that. I love looking at it and reading the little the little bit. Mm. Um, for instance, I think recently there was one with Thor and some other god who are about to, you know, both die, and they're doing the last fight, and it was this really emotional, like, cool, powerful, like, mm. you know, well-written, well also, like, really stunningly illustrated you know, piece of comic, but I was just like, man, this is just dead in the middle of a series that I had yeah. never even <laughs> begin with, so. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I get that. A lot of comics do try to be new reader friendly. Whenever you see like a number one Thor there that often they often renumber it because there's like a new writer or it's like a new story arc. Oftentimes yeah. they try to make it like new reader accessible. But also you're like, do I need to read the last Thor series to get this one? And sometimes yes, sometimes no. But with independent comic, because uh, this is from one of the cause the big two is DC and Marvel. This is one of the indie publishers. But these indie mm-hmm. publishers, it's really easy because, like Invincible, for example, Invincible yeah. ran from I think two thousand eight from like two thousand I'm sorry like two thousand three to like two thousand thirteen or something like. Wait. It had one universe, and it never you never had to like restart. You could just start at the beginning and read all the way through. Invincibles from two thousand three. I have to look that up. I'm gonna look it up right now. Uh, That's in. Just, if it's not at all recent, like even still, that's impressive because I've been so into Invincible, and it's just another example of me, like you know, loving the story and content of something, not even realizing that it was a comic in the first place. So, <laughs> uh, it be yeah. Oh my god, uh, the series began publication January twenty second, two thousand three. Jesus, including on February fourteenth, twenty eighteen, with one hundred and forty four issues. That is. 144 issues it's a lot it's it let, ran for a very long time and the benefit of that is that you don't have to like oh where do i start you can just go to number one and you're fine you don't have to worry <laughs> about reboots you don't have to worry about anything because it's an independent series its own comic you can just jump in at the start you know well I'll tell you what after hunger in the dusk i i'm i'm feeling like picking up something i'm, I'm familiar with and I'd, I'd like to maybe take a look at invincible i didn't oh, realize it was yeah. that big and that old you know they've done a really good job too they've reprinted like new issues and like collecting they reprinted a lot of stuff because they know people are going to get into it. So I think it's pretty easy to grab it if you have the ability to do so. But uh, pretty speaking cool. of indie series, we're going to get into Hunger and the Dusk. Let's do it. Man, I love just the big old splash screen just full of color. And like, 
don't know if splash screen is the right word, but you know, um, uh, splash I, page. I, when I was uh, mm-hmm. picking up Dune recently because the movies are coming out, um, I just I, I, one of the reasons I like the movie so much more is just I'm much more of a visual dude, and mm-hmm. first page, half of the page is just a massive image, just giving you the setting right there. I like that. I think it's pretty cool. I like comics. I'm in. Yeah, let's go. It's, it's a fun time. <laughs> but, uh, we go to our first page, which is just sort of the credits written by G. Willow Wilson, uh, art by Chris Wild Goose, colors by Masak. Fun fact about G. Willow Wilson, she was one of the creators of Miss Marvel. So shout out to her. Whoa, uh, that's Khan. cool. Yeah, so she's she has her own series. That's great. She's done a lot of writing, but uh, I yeah. enjoy her writing. And we have letters by Simon Boland, color assistant Diana Souza. And it's this first sort of teasing image of an Orkney human. We don't know what's happening. But uh, next up to our first actual page, it's... This is the page I was talking about, or I oh, thought I was talking page. about. It. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's the Vanishing Lands, two miles inland. And it's like these two kids, and they're trying to pick some apples, and uh, they're having a fun time. And as soon as it snaps, the whole tree starts falling down, and it's very much, a, it's like a silly, like, it feels very hobbity, like, you've got to go up and grab the potatoes, Mr. Frodo. And then they all fall, and they're like, oh, you know what I mean? I will say, like, as a massive nerd for animation mm-hmm. and film, like, it, it, these pages felt so animated. Because, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, like, clearly these these comic artists are, are people that have, you know, been doing this particular art style for a while. Mm-hmm. It seems like they've really, like, every emotion has such a, it's got sound to it. It's cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it feels like it could be an animated style, you know what I mean? Yeah, just even apples falling, like, it reminds me of, you know, Into the Spider-Verse, because that's the closest, mm-hmm. like, experience I had with a comic up until now. <laughs> but he's seeing, you know, different frames with, like, mm-hmm. you know, the studs, the thumps, and the, the onomatopoeias, like, actually, is visual references. That's mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, it's a fun time. Uh, but at the bottom of the page, they say, oh, no, and there's some shadows in the distance. And uh, they run after warn everybody. And it's some orcs. It's these three guys. Uh, they kind of give some details like, do you think their mothers tell us stories about them at night? That we build winter halls from the bones of human children and bathe in blood. Like he's kind of mocking their fear of them. Uh, Immediately on the side of the orcs. I'm like, <laughs> screw these kids, yo. I'm on. Oh. I, I, orcs mm-hmm. been misunderstood throughout media. Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. did them dirty. I'm an orc guy. No, I 100% love orcs. But uh, I guess, you know what, let's turn to the next page. Uh, let's stay on this one. What do you think of their design? Because they kind of screamed a little Warcraft to me when I first saw them. Just a Definitely. Yeah, and I I think it's it's hard to, mm-hmm. to like, give orcs a distinct, like, oh, these are Hunger Dusk orcs, these are Lord of the Rings orcs, because mm-hmm. it just, they had such a strong, like, piece of imagery, and it's just like a, a, an iconic silhouette, like, right out the gates. So it's it's hard to give it its you know, its own individual cultures until they start talking. So, mm. um, but yeah, seeing them, you know, classic orc, can't go wrong, big fan, pointy ears. And also the darker, like, red color skin, I think that's what, like, sort of drew me closer to the the Warcrafts um, comparison because I, I don't know how familiar you are with the lore. I actually think you're pretty familiar, but... Uh, the blood um, of some guy turned them red or something, right? It, they were originally red, and then they turned oh, green. Right, they originally... Because they were created yeah. as minions. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um they got they they got uh the salesman pitch mm-hmm. for turning to to the side of evil and drinking blood and then after they drank the blood it turned them green. Shout out to the green guys. Uh I think it's interesting <laughs> that you can you can tell a lot about them, I feel, just by their design. Like they don't have horses, they have yaks. Uh you can look at the shell on their shoulders and like the fact that it's summer, but this orc on the left is wearing like a big fur and the girl on the right it looks like she has like turtle shell shoulder pads yeah and, like, a turtle shoulder. they it's have like knitted clothing and you know mm-hmm. stuff like you know textiles and obviously like made by professionals they you know it seems like a like a like a good old modern well modern for their age i'm sure but like mm-hmm. civilized sort of work yeah. group it's one reason on their side they're not like unsophisticated like yeah they're like we're gonna come, there, yeah we're gonna come kill you uh, we're gonna be nice i'm an orc like yeah your classic go PhD, go to PhD, and <laughs> you. I don't know. <laughs> we were trying to evolve our orcs recently we're, in the D and D campaign. We're, we're elevating our orc experience. We're, no, we were Goliaths. <laughs> we're elevating our Goliaths. Yeah, but they had orcs, you know, <laughs> spirit. Did, we did. But uh, the next page, <laughs> there's a bit of uh, there's a bit of decorum. 
uh, they kind of joke around like, oh, you smell like shit. And he's like, this is a clean shirt. And he's like, you don't own any clean shirts. And they have a little bit of fun. And we cut back to the village where these two kids are talking to this village elder, I guess. They said, oh, we see orcs out. We see orcs. And uh, we cut back to these orcs. Again, this anytime you want to where... say something, yeah, yeah, you're doing yeah, it. Yeah, so this is where I started trying to like, like, get a, a, a temperature reading of like where orcs fit into the fantasy universe because i'm ready for them to be like the bad guys you know like that's usually how they get written out but i'm trying to see like you know gauging the reaction of these villagers like is it just kids freaking out because they saw things that look weird are they like mm. rare creatures you know so i'm um, happy with the world building up to this point yeah oh yeah and you can tell by their dialogue uh we were talking about the savageness of orcs and like there being more to them the dialogue here is like the valley looks fertile and the one in the middle says, uh, there's plenty of grass fodder for the animals. I hate to watch them starve. So they're kind of just saying they're not just killing to killing. They're here for to feed their animals. Yeah. They're here for, they have a purpose. It's like, all right, they're going to be tough, but like they're more sore about it. So it's like, you know, orcs with morals. <laughs> orcs, orcs with uh drive and purpose, not just senseless killing machines. Beautiful. But uh, this one orc is like, what is that smell? And they're kind of looking around and they're not sure what's going up. They see smoke coming from the beach. They draw their. I love the framing from all of this. It's mm-hmm. so like, yeah. I just, this is it fun feels to, cinematic. to look at. It feels like these are like yeah. storyboards. You know what I mean? It's like there was a director behind this. Mm-hmm. And you know, shout out to the artist. Uh, shout out to you, uh, Wild. We Goose love the artist movie. around here. He's doing great. He's thinking about this stuff. But they're just yeah. like, uh, who is it? Children and suddenly, up oh, beheaded. Dude, this took me for a ride right here, especially like the way that this, the, the horizontal, like the chopped page right here is just like, whoa, that was graphic for a comic. I forgot it goes in that direction. <laughs> oh yeah, it, fucking insane. It was, it's very much the anime, like head gone. Uh, yeah, and that, that first one at the top most, like mm-hmm. just, oh man, nasty. <laughs> and all three Great. of these orcs are dead and whatever this creature may be, they also cut off the head of this yak. Apparently, that was just mean. That's just mean. I wasn't happy and, about. It. And uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I was. I at this point, I was trying to figure out like, what was it supposed to be? Something that was like, you know, oh, the villagers are responding, and they just have like really crazy mm-hmm. archers, right? And is it the artists trying to say that they're just like that skillful with their shots or something? I didn't realize yeah. at this point, like, what exactly was the because like I, I think that's just part of me being new to comics right like i didn't know was this wild animation like yeah. actually supposed to be super significant and crazy and mysterious or was it just like an exaggerated like dude got shot with a fat arrow you know yes yeah no that's kind of the fun of it is it like are they that good or is it something else and you kind of have to mm. read it's supposed to like draw you in but serious uh, we, we get our first uh narration they come out of the dusk out of the west uh they said the name uh, when the light is in <laughs> well, when they do that. Uh, I like so that phrasing. Hot. Very hot. Uh, when the light yeah. is in your eyes, like while you're being blinded, they attack, which is very interesting. Yeah. Uh, the next page, we have a bunch of humans. We get a bit more information. Uh, Freaking yeah. humans. I'm so like, I was skimming through this bit. I was like, get me back to those orcs, dude. That was exciting. <laughs> but uh, it's interesting because they say, oh, do you think the fighting companies will help us? And somebody says, uh, they don't come along the coast. They stay up north because the orcs are up north. And the orcs earlier said they're pushing south. So, you know, you have that territorial yeah. dispute going on. Gang wars. And Human gang rise up. The gang rise up. But uh, not these orcs. And it's a feel bad for these peasants because they have like a shovel and a the, pitchfork. Yeah. They're suing peasant stuff. <laughs> peasant shit. But uh, it turns out it's not them. Uh, we get more narration. Some thought they came out of the past, a people long gone who chose that moment to return. I loved that. That like mm-hmm. really thickened the plot for me. I was real happy with that. That was so oh, cool. Yeah. And the thing is, and like, then the shadows. Yeah, oh man. I was about to say, like, you can't even tell what that's supposed to be. You're like, what it's is so that? Sick. And it's just like, uh, it's them, the ones who left. And then we don't even see what the beat creatures are. We just cut to like hours later where humans are bisected the sad little orphan boy the only server walks away and then we get our title card like the hunger in the dusk yeah when i got to this part i was like okay i'll read a couple of pages i'll pick it up tomorrow and as soon as i hit this page i'm like yo i'm fucking in uh, yeah, finish, it. <laughs> finish it in one go after this it was and, so good and you know again this feels cinematic like you could see it shot like wide shot then a close-up shot of the blood as the kid walks away you know what i mean yeah 
six months later, we're in sort of this mm. plains, this rocky outcropping. I don't know why. It reminds me of like Stonehenge-esque, like Ireland-esque. I don't know. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, the scattered stonescape, right? With the, uh, you know, mountains and lakes, dark greenery, all that good stuff. Is Stonehenge and, in uh, Ireland? Am I stupid? No, it's in England. It's actually a couple oh, hours out okay. of London. Ooh, London. Ooh. <laughs> but, uh, this guy's got a, he's, he's got a Flynn Rider vibe going. No, 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 not yeah. Flynn. The guy from Frozen. What's his name? Uh, Christoph? Olaf? Oh. <laughs> no, that's the snowman. <laughs> Yeah, uh, like what? What I, I was thinking, like Aragorn Light, Walmart Aragorn. You know what I mean? But uh, we see this guy; he's overlooking the plains, and then with a guy with a guitar, says, "Are they late or are we early?" I don't know why I read him like that, but uh, I love your voice. Just never change it. <laughs> really adds flavor. Thank you. But um, we find out from this dialogue as this Ar- Walmart Aragorn and this guy with a guitar talk. Uh, they mentioned that uh, the uh, they're waiting for orcs. If they're not serious about this truce, this would be an excellent place for an ambush. So they're trying to do a truce, but they're still on edge. We cut to the next page where we get a bit more. This, these are the pages where it feels like. Uh, what a you know, big dude. I know he's tall. Mm, tall. He's No, not like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean like he's a tall man. He's okay. That's what I'm talking. Is that about. a child next to him? No, it's a short king. <laughs> or at least I think so. I have no idea actually. Uh, All right, I continue. Think... <laughs> but they're a bit confused. They're like, if this is if this isn't a truce and an ambush, we're the saddest, poorest fighting company. I don't know why they invited us, but we find out that they're invited by clerics. These guys. That's a D&D gang. I was about to say they look like they're in Warhammer robes. Yeah, a little uh, bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah those those are tech priests. Tech priests. Tech priests. They're just like, oh well, you know, uh, we summoned you here. Uh, the orcs actually specified you guys. We're trying to do some thing. We're not entirely sure, but they're staring at these obelisks. But uh, love me a good fantasy obelisk. Love me a good fantasy saying. obelisk. Especially like in The Witcher. Like I still don't know what's going on over there, honestly. I, I have no idea what's happening in The Witcher. All I know is that it's big and it's important for the I'll, plot. I'll, 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 like ask, it. I'll ask Henry Cavill. He, I feel like he knows a lot about The Witcher. He does. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that one of the reasons he left the show? He was like, I don't like the direction this is going. It is literally like the most significant reason. I think he also needed to dip out to do some other stuff, namely some Warhammer stuff potentially. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's, that's one of the big motivating factors. So yeah. But uh, we get a bit more information about uh, Walmart Aragorn. He talks about how he was 19, <laughs> holding the line, uh, fighting these orcs. So this guy's been fighting for a very long time. It's refreshing to see like a main character that's not also a teenager again, trying to hit that wide audience demographic mm-hmm. but it's like okay this guy's actually like he's seen fights he's yeah he's a minimum not just, 25 not a strangely strong teenager for some reason for yeah. some reason that's able to like throw it out with adults i saw i feel like you've been watching a lot of anime by saying that <laughs> seen some things <laughs> so we don't need to go into that. <laughs> uh our guests will arrive in the hour and we see a different company of orcs on some yaks i guess i don't know yeah what's the what's orcs saying? are back the orcs are back and now we get to spend a hot minute with the orc and they're talking about how this those there's ears. This, those ears those are big that's one difference between that's not warcraft because i think the orc ears in warcraft are very small but they have yeah these, do you, these, these things have, have like cell reception and they're wearing like gauges or something i like the hot cool. topic and they got gauges for their ears <laughs> I love that for them. But <laughs> we see the orcs kind of talk apparently the leader is sending his little cousin they're sending her to be sort of a representative of the orc army. And he says, orc-kind, orc-kind cannot fight them alone. Neither can humankind. This treaty is our only hope of survival. She's like, but uncle, I don't want to. Well, I, I want to come back home and do orc stuff. <laughs> That's what she said. She's like, <laughs> I want to do orc stuff. Send me home. <laughs> you must teach them to do our orc stuff. You must teach them to do our dance. And then she starts doing a little, the worm. <laughs> <laughs> it's the work dance is the worm. The work dance is the worm. But he kind of talks about how these Vangle, we have a name for these mystery bad guys. The Vangle huh? 
uh, are pushing for the humans and the orcs need to work together. And I think there's, it's very much interesting in the sense that it tells you, it gives you a lot of information, but you also learn a lot about what's not told in the sense that, okay, this is a fantasy world. Are there no elves? Are there no dwarves? Is it just humans and orcs? Like where are other species? Are they still around? Like, I think it's interesting that humans are the last resort for their alliance. You know what I mean? Orcs and humans, man. Orcs and humans. It's classic. Got to smash that beef. <laughs> uh, what? You get, this what? beef back on the menu, <laughs> boys. <laughs> Next page, we see <laughs> they point out to the obelisk where the humans are. And apparently mm, the obelisk again. Obelisk. I don't. <laughs> it's the borders uh, between the orc and human land. And there's a very interesting commentation. Uh, they're both cousins, but apparently there's a bit of a flirtation, I guess, because he says, perhaps our children will come to know this place as peace was born. And she's like, our children He's like, you know what I mean? I'm not talking about you. Uh, is she, so she's into it. He's not. Okay, got it. Yeah, Let's continue. Yeah, there's something like that. Something like that. <laughs> I thought the orcs lived up north, but it seems like they're coming from the south. Yeah, no, they're. I think they're coming down to the south from the north. They're from the north. <laughs> I don't. I just realized what you said. I'm gonna ignore it. Uh, uh, so we have a bit of a quiet page again. Very cinematic. You can feel like love these. There's, there's no sound. You just hear kind of nature as he's standing and you can see someone appearing from the smoke and ching they clash oh man i love that that's just so cool like look how strong that is man that's such a good shot plus like just the height difference they're both crouching but like this guy the orcs i can i can hear that clang Mm -hmm. but uh we go to the next page where they kind of they have a -a tete-a-tete like are you gonna put down your sword and he's like, are you going to my head be on my shoulders? And I'm like, just kiss already. But uh, they I know, right? They put down their swords. <laughs> and um, he dialogue, mentions, dialogue, they, dialogue, 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 dialogue. He kind of mentions like, eh. I fought a lot of mercenaries and you guys are the ones I trust you with my cousin's safety. So we have this big meeting. They're being summoned. They go to the obelisk. The Warhammer mm. tech priests are like, all right. Everyone's here. Let's get it together. And we have our two people meeting this orc ship. girl. Ship it. Ship immediately. immediately. Immediately ship. ship. Immediately ship. One mean girl and one sarcastic. Look at those dude, eyes. Look at that top right panel. Look at those eyes right there. Mm-hmm. Can you not? He's just, yeah, he's it, just like, it feels almost like a wedding. Like he's trying to joke and she's just not having it. I, didn't even, I forgot about the wedding part too. Like obvious ship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's. I'm hoping he's going to help her away from that stupid cousin romance yeah get out of there thing they were hinting at earlier it was lame but the, the tech priests are like for centuries this place has been a bitter wound a border between the lands of enemies the blah da da da, da. now let's stop Look at those mutton shops those big, he has these big fucking it's impressive what, what is the there's somebody i'm thinking with big old there's someone i'm thinking of big old munch jesse I, Man, I don't fuck, i don't know who that is <laughs> I really that's not a joke. I don't know who you're talking about. I'm just thinking. Oh, oh, uh, Hellboy. Oh, okay. Sure. Why not? (laughs) But uh, how many other mutton shops are out there? You know, I don't know. Plenty of them. Uh, but the 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 tech priest goes on and says, Overlord Troth has entrusted his uh, cousin, and never forget your primary task is to stay alive. So uh, we see a wounded oh, orc come in. He says, it's them. They're coming. And then suddenly uh, they're like, who's coming? Them, the Van Gogh. And then everyone gets ready for a fight. Uh, and then we get our first look at the fucking Van Gogh. What the Do you, Okay, so I was kind of disappointed by this. Okay. I'm not going to lie. I, so I, I, one of my favorite kinds of like thriller, horror, or like whatever type of movie mm-hmm. is like monster movie. Like I love a good monster. And I feel like every time it's like, oh, it's skeletons. Mm-hmm. It just it feels like a cop out almost. It's like you have the the creative freedom of a new fantasy mm-hmm. world, and it's just like, oh, here's the big reveal. Oh my god, skeletons! It's like, ah, uh, well, they're no. not skeletons. They're like, yeah, they got some flesh, but you yeah, know what I mean? Some, like, yeah, uh, just, I like them. I don't like how they're taller than everyone. Um, that's kind of cool, actually. I forgot I, about that. I, I, it's very scary. 
But um, it kind of reminds me of like a mix between Gollum and Slenderman. Like if, you, if those two <laughs> got married and had babies, these are the babies. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, like skeleton school zombie, like the whole freaking mm-hmm. you know, them are vampires. Like that's just all the people have been doing vampires lately in a way that mm-hmm. I've been kind of like. I just I don't feel like if you go to the, I feel like it's ironic saying that after I've been gushing over classic orcs for a minute. It's like. <laughs> classic villain is just skeletons thought i'd be more excited but no i just i don't know i was hoping for more no I like um that. oh man like the movie the ritual had such a good monster in it oh my god awesome it was not a skeleton so there you go i made my point let's continue okay <laughs> i think uh their designs are meant to be scaring and intimidating and i think with some of these panels it works pretty well I didn't get the sizing actually i didn't mm-hmm. realize that they were supposed to be giants because i felt like when we first saw the shadows Back in like the second panel, I think, or the mm-hmm. third, not panel, but page. Um, I thought maybe it was just angle, right? Because it seemed like it was sunset. Yeah, you know, I the thought sun it was is the angle coming down. Because of the sun, but uh, yeah, and then, they're tall. They're tall. And then over here, like, it's uh, the chick is on the ground. She's like on all fours. So I, it could easily just be like, oh, it's just like five foot ten just mm-hmm. thing just standing upright, right? Like, I did. But if they're big boys, that's pretty big cool. Boys. They're tall boys. But Let's uh, see how big they are. There's some fighting, uh, there's some fighting pages. Uh, orc cousin girl falls on the ground. She says, please don't. But then our Walmart Aragorn saves her. <laughs> He's graduating from what? Walmart to Costco Aragorn. <laughs> oh, Costco. Okay, Costco Aragorn. He gets slashed in the back. Uh, and then suddenly we get our first taste of magic, apparently. Uh, she does a little palm thing into his chest. Like, choo. And then, oh, uh, man. He kept that bottom panel is so sheet. clean. This Look at bottom- that. It's so oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> And like, okay, you, they are big. Oh yeah, they are big. Uh, you can see in the background there's a there's a I think two orcs. It takes two of them to take one down. And these are like tall motherfuckers. But uh, Costco Aragorn shoves his shield <laughs> into the head of one of these guys, and they take him out together. And I I like little details because you know ship. Uh, yeah yeah ship it. He's like oh you already healed. I've never seen a healer work like that way. And she's like I said it the old ways uh, when I was training at the mall. Uh, my friends call me Tara, and he's like, "Are we gonna be friends then?" And she's like, "Can I think about it?" And they're kind of they're kind of warming up to each other. Called it immediately. immediately. <laughs> <laughs> the, the end of this series is gonna be them getting married back in front of that pylon. Well, it, well, I, I, I will definitely mm-hmm. lend you the rest of the series if you're interested in it because there's only oh, six more issues. Very much so. Uh, for like season, there's one. six. Oh, well, only six for like this part season, like this Dang. this. Uh, but um, there is orc sex, if that's something that interests you. Like, you I don't just, see I, it, but it's like <laughs> HBO, like, back shots. And they're like, oh. Is that inter- <laughs> it's, that's it, enticing. HBO, not stars? Okay. Uh, we'll see. Which, which is more revealing? Uh, it used to be HBO, but I think stars took the lead recently. I forgot what it was, but I, I get what you're putting down. You don't see genitals, but it's very clear what they're doing. You know. All right. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, uh, this girl Tara and Costco Aragorn are getting along <laughs> a little bit better. Tech Priest is getting healed up, and they kind of they. There's a bit more narration. They came out of the dusk. They came with a terrible hunger to swallow the vanishing lands, and we mm. could never have imagined what lay in store for us. So this narration is from the future. It is sort of like a story being told from the past, and uh, the future. I mean, and the last yeah. thing we see is the orc cousin staring on and his little <clears throat> cousin sister or whatever kind of walks away to go hang out with all the humans and that's the end of the issue hooray i was very surprised with how fast it ended i was like i was so into it and then like two pages later it's like we're done i'm like oh fuck yeah. all right you know it's that tough thing that uh sort of like animation you only have so many minutes with comics you only have a certain amount of pages <clears throat> yeah i figure that's like I, I think that was the one downside to all this it's like mm-hmm. man i was so ready to just like keep banging it out because you know netflix mm-hmm. era right it's all about binging so oh yeah um, if, if i i wish i could have had like at least one or two more pages of combat i think would have been fun mm, would have been nice but yeah so um so this is what reading comics is like huh you just yeah. get like good good 10 15 pages right you gotta well, wait for the next what week i will say is that uh this is i think <laughs> it's idw is the label behind this one uh, mm. idw is like one of the biggest in, indie labels out there what I do like about their comic is that there's no ads. The entire time you keep going and you just read, read, read. Wait. The ads are there like at ads the ads in comics? Oh my god. Uh, are you serious? Yeah. That's so annoying. 
I'll show it to you off camera, but uh, you I'll bought the it. comic, and they're like, <laughs> "What?" It'll, it'll be funny because you'll see like you'll see like someone like a bullet shooting. They're like, "No, can I stop the bullet?" And then you turn the page, and it's like Spider Man number fifty seven. He asked Mary Jane on a date again, Bro. and it's like, okay. "Oh my god." not gonna lie that's kind of a massive turn that i feel mm-hmm. like ads are they're freaking everywhere like daisy and i are watching shogun right now and mm-hmm. we like they do a bunch of ads because it's hulu and then mm-hmm. it plays the opening credits and it just goes straight into more ads and i'm yeah. like dude stop it like <laughs> <laughs> i hate ads sorry erica no it's okay uh i get it uh shout out erica but um <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, I liked IDW because all the ads are at the back of the page. You know, they have advertisements for like different other comics. I respect but, uh, that. You know, I'll go take a look at those ads right now. Let's see what we got. <laughs> let's look at the ads right now. Hell yeah. Uh, you put them at the back. I'll look for them. Let's go. I, I will at least say that's only with the physical. If you buy uh, the trades that have all the issues, they don't have ads. If you buy it digitally, they don't have ads. You just read the comic normally. So it's just sort of like a physical issue thing, you know? Oh, they put the other like variants at the back yeah. of the comic? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier. Cause I look at should... look at them two looking at each other right here. Look at I, you can't see it. My camera's too. Oh, yeah. But let me tell you something. Oh, they're looking at each other. Nice... Yeah, they're like, ooh, should we kiss a little? And you know what? They should. They should. Because I'm not, I should. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say whether something does or doesn't happen. But I appreciate it. Thank I'm, you. Because I'm, I'm, I'm actually on the same level as you. Uh, thank you very much for letting me borrow this. I would happily check out issue two. And, and finish out the season. Um, this is really cool. Thank you. Yeah, this, this, thank it was you. Good. good. Sorry. Uh, overall, what do you think of the issue? Just as <laughs> like an opening issue for someone who doesn't really read a lot of comics. I like it. I do think that it's going to be sort of <laughs> like annoying to do like 15 pages at a time. <laughs> but I respect that's the medium, right? You know, these guys, they have to take the time to be able to, you know, actually make the art and put it together and publish it and all that stuff. That's, yeah. Um, how much is an issue, by the way? Uh, it's like it four bucks. I think this one was like three ninety nine or something. Does it say on the cover? Okay. I feel like it usually does. I don't see it now. Oh yeah, yeah, three ninety nine. Cover D. Oh, that's the variant cover. So they have cover A, which is a regular cover. B, C, and they have different covers. Interesting. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Um, I think uh, recently I picked up some other uh, much larger ones. I actually haven't cracked them just yet. I think you gifted me one actually, uh, but. Uh, it's definitely like made me head towards that direction of like my old library that I haven't picked up of mm-hmm. the larger like multiples stacked together in a single book because it's really cool. I liked it a lot. It's great. I, I Thank will you. Say, I just count- you're welcome. I just I just counted the pages. It is technically 25 <clears throat> pages of story. Oh, it's not, not 15, bad. but I get the way the story flows a bit. It does feel a bit fast in some pages that you kind of gloss over some dialogue or some action. Those action scenes, man, they make you read as fast as the action goes. Mm-hmm. But That's uh, cool. Yeah, I really enjoy this. I think it's a sixth issue for season one, and they take a little break, and then they they're coming back this summer. I think in June they're starting like their season two, so it's a continuation. Uh, I'm really excited for it. I love it. Um, yeah. Hell yeah! Uh, if it goes we, the route. Mm-hmm. Sorry? No, go ahead, please. If it goes the route of Invincible, we can look forward to the animation coming oh, out in about 20 years. God. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I feel like Amazon's really getting into animation lately with, like, Vox uh, Machina. And we love it. And even the, what was it, the boys animation. Did you watch that? The boys, what was that animation? No, movie? I haven't even seen the boys to begin with yet. Oh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I liked yep. it way more than I thought I would. Uh, I So, speaking of the the animation i know this isn't animated but just looking at the art style you know i've been getting it, like even more into painting warhammer recently um mm-hmm. as a result of that like you sort of just it, you, if you paint stuff you are aware of how challenging it is to get stuff like lighting and shading mm-hmm. and edge highlights right so i was looking through this you know taking a, a, a closer look on my second go through now like man <laughs> <laughs> comic art style is so impressive it's so cool mm-hmm. to see this especially because like it's, it seems like there's so much more detail than if it were to be animated because i'm sure like the technology it takes to um to animate at speed right because i'm mm-hmm. sure that they don't put the whole budget behind that um especially with like uh <sighs> invincible you know if they get a voice mm-hmm. cast with jk simmons right i mean <laughs> probably where a good chunk of the budget's going 
but I opened up a uh, Invincible comic a while back, and I was like, wow, this looks so much more different than mm-hmm. what Amazon put on the TV. So, um, just, you know, more respect for being able to see it in the paper medium. It's really cool. Mm-hmm. It's it's really cool. <clears throat> but uh, is there anything? This is the end of the episode. Thank you so much for joining me. I uh, love talking to you about things that you're interested in. I'm interested in just love talking to you. Uh, is there any parting words, social medias you'd like to lay forth for the 10 consistent people that watch this? <laughs> Shout out to the 10 um, consistent people that watch this. I appreciate you all. No social medias. It's just me spamming uh, anything you like to stupid promote, rate videos. Ideas. Reddit? You, wanna... uh, you know what? I would like to promote Warhammer because I, I'd i be happy to have more people to, to be able to play with. I feel like a lot, you know. Uh, I feel like people are starting to move more towards tabletop stuff away from from virtual and 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 games, and I, I think it'd be really cool if we could bolster that community and to, and get more games rolling, more people throwing dice, the higher opportunities to meet new people, make new friends. Uh, so if you're out there, you're looking for something fun to do, join me and the boys. We'll play some time. Oh yeah, if you're in LA County and you see Kevin walking, just run up to him and be like, "You want to play Warhammer?" And he'll he'll teach you how to play. I'll bust out two thousand points from my back pocket, ready to go. <laughs> 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 it, it just, it's just like, how'd you get that in the in the pocket? Shh, shh, don't worry about it. Today. Yeah, I'm always ready for a game. I'm ready. <laughs> shout out to tabletop gaming and all that. Join join up. It's a fun time. We'll make new friends. Yeah. Shout out uh Warhammer Cafe at Monrovia. That's the only place I've ever been to, and it seems pretty nice. And we're gonna head back there, yeah? You're gonna play with us again? That's yeah, right, so everybody. Noah me, said <laughs> Noah said that he's gonna play Warhammer again. It's already amazing. You said it for the first time, but now going, he's doing it for round two. Going. That was my You're going because it's fun as heck, man. And we like playing with you, too. It's a good I, time. I enjoy hanging out with my friends. I enjoy hanging out with you, too, man. Thanks again for bringing me on to this. This There's, is really cool. Uh, Appreciate if it. If you guys are interested in my work, you can follow me on uh, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and Letterbox at Noah is Garcia. You can find my photography works at Noah Garcia underscore photography on Instagram and uh here on youtube under noah garcia uh yeah that's it thank you he guys so is much the watching. garcia i am the garcia noah is garcia uh goodbye See you bye later. everyone